Hey, it's AP, and today we're making a big helmet on a little printer. Check it out. A long time ago in a galaxy called New Jersey, a good friend of mine, Mr. James Hannon, author of many books, including his latest hit, The Anatomy of a Cosplayer, which you can buy at the Amazon link below, asked me if I would make him a custom Mandalorian helmet. And of course I said, well, yes, author James Hannon, I will absolutely do that for you. We sat down and decided what type of style he was going for, and we landed on a Death Watch style Mandalorian helmet with a visor that goes up and down. Now, the problem with 3D printing a helmet, for me, is that I have this tiny little Prusa Mark 2.5S, and the print bed just cannot accommodate the size of a single shot print. It's okay, little buddy. It's not the size that counts. It's the quality of the prints. Because the file was so big, I had to throw it in a mesh mixer and slice it up into manageable pieces. I did a tutorial a while back on how to do just that, and I will leave a link to that tutorial in the description below, as well as up here somewhere. So you just click on that and uh, head on over there and learn how I did that, and then come back here to see how we actually assemble all those files together. All right, let's print these files out and start assembling. Now that I have my jigsaw puzzle of a bucket on my workbench, it's time to start gluing it together. So for this, I'm just going to use some regular old fashioned CA glue, some accelerator, and some support um, things that I printed. Uh, this will help as I'm gluing the pieces together It'll give me a little bit of a lip to attach all the pieces together with. Does that make sense? <laughs> so, it will once I start putting it all together. I probably should have numbered all of these pieces. So that's the back. This is the front. That must be... the top of the bucket. Yes, okay. Yeah, that looks right. Yeah, okay. Use a generous amount of CA glue on one side and then spray the other side with your accelerator. Once you join the two pieces together, you need to work really fast as the accelerator works almost instantaneously. These little bracket things are just to help give a little more stability as I'm gluing everything together. Oh, the white stuff on the dome is just some discoloration from the glue and the accelerator. Don't worry about that. It'll get covered up soon enough. So next we're going to fit this on James. Just make sure it, it sits all right on his head. And then we'll start uh, filling it, uh, filling all the cracks and seams, fiberglassing the inside, and the long and arduous process of sanding, priming, sanding, priming, sanding, priming, sanding, priming. So let's go call James. You know, once once you try it on and let us know that that fits all right. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> that actually looks good on you. All right, and you know there will be some padding in there, so it'll it'll hold it up a little bit for you, so your head's not. You know, hitting on that plastic. Awesome, cool, yeah. it fits. That's okay. the thing I was most concerned about. So cool. we'll move on to the next phase. This was, as you know, was made in multiple pieces and it's just being held together with super glue. And so to really add some strength to it, I'm going to fiberglass at a minimum the seams. If I have any leftover fiber, I will uh, do the entire interior of the bucket. Uh, I'm doing this outside because this resin really stinks. Uh, so it's always good to be doing this stuff in a very well ventilated area. Uh, that is also why I have this contraption. So I'm not inhaling nasty, nasty fumes. Is it safe? All right, so. Here, let me 
get this off for a second. Uh, so other things to do or be cognizant of when you're using or working with fiberglass. Uh, latex gloves, nitrile gloves are uh, super helpful uh, to keep all this stuff off of you. This stuff is really sticky. Um, if you do get it in a place where you don't want it, uh, acetone tends to help. Uh, don't wear nice clothes. That's why I have this ratty sweater on. Ow. There we go. Not better. There we go. Uh, it's good to have some chip brushes uh, to, to kind of get the, the resin in. Uh, some mixing sticks. A flat... Uh, kind of thing to put the mixed resin so I can kind of scoop in my sheets here. Uh, scissors if you need it. Preferably you've cut up all of your strips beforehand so you're not kind of caught in the middle needing a strip and then your cans are covered in fiber and fiberglass. Uh, and then follow the instructions on the, uh, the package for mixing the, uh, the resin. It's very particular uh, in terms of the ratio. If you do uh, too much of the hardener, uh, your working time will be drastically cut. Um, if you do too little, then the hardener won't be as effective and you could end up with some wet spots in your fiberglass. So it's good to measure um, as accurately as you can. Uh, all right, and then I'm just gonna mix it up in here and then pour it into this tray here. So let's, let's do this again. All right. These chip brushes are great for this. You could pick up a box of them at Harbor Freight for just a few bucks. I started by loading up the brush and spreading a liberal amount of resin along the inside seam. Then I took my first piece of fiberglass sheeting and laid it down, making sure to really push it into the resin. Finally, I just brushed more resin over that and repeated the process until the whole interior was covered. Well, the fiberglass is cured, and now it's time to start sanding the inside of the bucket. Um, you know, because there's going to be some rough edges in here that, you know, could could hurt if you pricked yourself on them. So I'm just going to smooth down the edges uh, so it doesn't hurt. So for the fiberglass, I'm using um, 60 grit. Uh, you could use 80 grit uh, and then work your way up. I'm just using 60 because I have a bunch of these sanding discs that I've had forever and I never use them. So I'm going to use them on this uh, because you are sanding glass and resin safety. All right. I feel like uh, Walter White getting ready to start mixing up a batch. Now that the edges of the inside are smooth and the fiberglass won't be pricking anybody, I'm moving on to the outside. For this, I'm using some glazing spot putty from Bondo to fill in the smaller seams. And then for the larger gaps and seams and the areas where I kind of have to reconstruct a little bit, I'm using this two-part um, uh, material called Fix It, which is once it dries, it dries like stone. It is really hard stuff. So um, that'll be good for kind of remolding some of the uh, areas that need to be remolded. So let's start with the Bondo, and I'm gonna do that for both the helmet and the, the gauntlets. So I have my wax carving kit to help me smooth this stuff on. So as you can see here, we have some, some bigger bigger ga gaps here. Um, I might use the fix it there instead of the Bondo. Uh, these smaller gaps are, are good for the Bondo. So let's start with the Bondo. Bondo has a relatively quick working time of about three to five minutes and is sandable in about 30 or so. I use my wax carvers to put the Bondo on, but you could just as easily use your finger. It'll be messier and less controlled, but it may go faster. So to each their own on this one. While the Bondo sets up, I'm knocking down some of the seams that glued together unevenly causing ridges. I used a low grit sandpaper to make quick work of that. After the Bondo cured, I ran over it with a 120 grit sandpaper to help smooth it out. And then we repeat. 
The Fix-It is great for larger areas. It's a little on the stiff side, almost like a hard clay. I just rolled it on and then smoothed it out with my fingers. And then we sand again. For the Fix-It, and to speed up smoothing down some of the larger areas, I broke out the orbital sander with 220 grit. This whole process goes on and on until all your seams are as perfect as possible. I can really only liken this to taping and mudding drywall seams. All right, now that I have all of the Bondo dried and sanded down as best as I think I can, I'm gonna start putting on the filler primer. What the filler primer is going to do is, filler primer has this material inside of it that really gets into tiny gaps and helps provide a nice smooth surface once you've sanded the filler primer down. Um, this is great for 3D prints, especially when you have uh, lines that you have to deal with. Once you put a few coats of this on, a nice good thick coat of this on and sand it down, it should come out nice and smooth, which is what we're looking for. Also what this is going to do is help me see all the crimes that I need to adjust on here. This was one, two, three, four, four, I have five or six pieces glued together and then um, puttied and, and sanded. So there are going to be imperfections here. What the filler primer or the primer is going to do is help reveal the areas that I need to focus my attention on. Spray in even sweeps across the helmet. Wait about five to 10 minutes between coats. After letting it fully dry for several hours, I came back and did a wet sanding with 220 grit paper. I like doing this at this point because the wet sanding liquefies the filler primer and helps really get it into the tiny, tiny layer lines better. I then moved on to 120 grit to knock down some uneven areas. Sanding off the filler primer is perfectly okay because you're going to be putting on more in a bit anyway. Uh, I have some more um, bondoing I have to do uh, on some of these areas. So I'm just going to go through and do that. And once that, once the Bondo is dry, then I'll come back, uh, sand that down, and then put my second coat of filler primer on, and then repeat the process. Pretty much when you're finishing 3D prints, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a rinse and repeat. You know, you, you prime, you sand, you fill, you prime, you sand, you fill, you prime, you sand, you fill until you get it as smooth and clear as possible. Uh, the challenges with this particular project is that it was cut up into so many different pieces. If I had a larger print bed where I could print this all in one shot, um, I wouldn't have to do as much work. But because there are so many seams and there was a lot of unevenness because of gluing it back together, so much more post-processing has to go into this. Bondo, sand, prime, sand, repeat. And now we're ready to paint. The particular blue that James liked didn't come in a rattle can, so I had to use my airbrush, which was totally fine. It just took a few more passes. I used Tamiya masking tape for the lines and then regular blue tape for larger coverage areas. I just like Tamiya tape. I find they create the best lines and don't damage the paint you're masking. After everything had some time to dry, I removed the tape and then gave it a wet sanding with a thousand grit sandpaper. I then put some clear coat on top for a protective finish. To install the visor, I traced the shape out on some rosin paper to make a template, then cut the template out of a welding shield. Hot glued it in place, and we now have our custom Mando helmet. This came out so cool. And unless you're looking really closely, you won't be able to tell that it's made up of like, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six different pieces. So, I call that a win for printing full-size buckets on a tiny 3D printer. Things I learned along the way. Well, first and foremost, when you're printing big buckets on little printers, I wonder if that should be the name of the episode. When you're printing big buckets on little printers and you're having to slice everything up to get it to fit onto the print bed, as things print out, warping can happen. Um, there could be issues um, as the printer is going through the layers. And so when you start putting things, putting the pieces together, they might not always fit 100%. And so that's where a lot of the finishing really comes into play. But this is all held together with, you know, CA glue, fiberglass on the inside for a nice, tight, sturdy, um, uh, sturdy bucket here. 
The seams are all reinforced with fiberglass as well. So I would not toss this on the floor by any means, but uh, hopefully the fiberglass will give it some reinforcement just in case it kind of tossles around in the back seat when you're going from con to con. Well, thank you so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed the episode. Make sure you give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment below. If you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'm always doing really cool stuff like this that you're not going to want to miss out on. If you're a social butterfly like myself, head on over to Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or all those cool channels and uh, we can continue the conversation over there. All right, I have to go deliver this to its future owner. So until next time, stop planning and start making. Thanks for watching, everyone. All right. This is the way.